Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we'll be working with the Twitter data. First of all, we'll be seeing how we can actually get the Twitter data and once we have the Twitter data, how we can find useful insights from the data. So in this video, this will be a short video and, and we will not be looking into how we can actually develop a machine learning model or how we can deploy it to Azure. I'll be making some upcoming videos where we'll be deep diving deep into all these things, all the technologies specifically into NLP, reinforcement learning, as well as how we can actually deploy these models. So for this video, let's first have a look at the agenda. So we will be first seeing how we can actually extract the Twitter data. We will not be making use of the Twitter API as that is now paid. We will look at an alternative way. So once we have the Twitter data, what we will do, we will try to answer a few of these questions which are mentioned here. And after we have that, we will also be looking at the tweets column and we will see can we actually find out the sentiments like whether that particular tweet is positive, negative or it's a neutral tweet. And we'll also be looking at what are the most common words in those particular tweets. So now let's dive into the code. So here's my notebook file and I'll be going through each and every line of the code. So if you have any queries guys, just post it in the comments down below and I'll try to answer each and every question. So now let's see. So rather than using the Twitter API, I have made use of the SNT Witter. So okay, so I have imported that particular module and I have also imported the pandas and the date time and the time delta module. And what I have done first of all is I have defined a list of all the tags. So what does that mean? So these are actually the hashtags. So I'll be searching for all those, all these particular hashtags in the Twitter. So such as if there is any tweet with hashtag Apple, hashtag Google. So I'll be fetching all those tweets from the Twitter. And I've also defined the date time, such as the starting date and the ending date. So I'll be just looking between these seven days and I'll be looking for these hash values hashtag in the Twitter and I'll be fetching those data. So for, those, for that, what I'm doing is I'm looping through each and every tag in my stocks. And once I am doing that, uh, I'm also iterating for each and every day. So I have to get data for each and every day, right? For seven days. So it's going to loop for each and every day. And for each day, what I'm doing is I'm making use of the time delta and I'm adding that to my starting date. So if my starting date is 1st February 23, it will add a time delta of days to a day. So it will add that particular value to my date value. Okay. And then I have created a query. And what does that, what, what uh, this query is actually telling is that fetch the stock. So in my first iteration, the stock value will be altcoin. And I'll be converting it to, to the lower and in the upper. So I'm saying whether this is an upper value, a lower value or a normal value, which is written in this list. And I'm also defining the language. So here the language is an English language. And I'm also defining the date values. So starting here until the time date of Delta of one. So time date this to this, I am fetching that using the Twitter search scraper dot get items method, which we get. Okay. So either we can define the language English here or here and why we are making use of language as English because if we do not define that we can get tweets of any other language also. So for working with that, that is actually quite tricky. So in this video, I'm not making, we are not fetching any data, which is not in, not of English language. Okay. So we are filtering that content. So once we have that, we're actually making or extracting four values. That is the date value, the date on which that particular tweet was made, the ID of that particular tweet, the user who made that particular tweet and the content. And if the length of that particular tweet is greater than 2000, I'm actually breaking that up. So once I have all that data, I'm storing that data in a data frame. And once I have into the data frame, I'm storing that into a CSV value. So how I'm actually storing it in a value. So for each and every tag and each and every day, I'm storing it into a separate value. 
I can actually create a one file with all the data, but I'm just doing this so that I can show you if you want a separate file, you can do that as well. So this is how it's gonna look like. Okay. So for each tag and each date, I will have a separate CSV file. So you can say for each tag, I will have around seven CSV files. Okay. So in the next steps, we'll be clubbing everything together. I just wanted to show you that you can do this. Uh, you can do it in this way as well. So now let's see what's the next step. So the next step, what I have done is I have clubbed the seven days data of each and every tag into the one CSV file. So how I have done that, I have created seven different lists for each of these tags. And I am appending the CSV of each and every, like it's going to loop for seven times for each day and it's going to fetch that particular CSV value and it's going to append it into that particular list. Okay, so once I have that list, I'm just concatenating it and I'm ignoring the previous signal so that I have a continuous index values. So now what does these values contain? So this actually contains the merged data of my seven days. Okay. So here I have tried to check the shape. So we can see that I have around 13,986 rows of the altcoin and 61 of Apple and so on. So now what I can do is I can further club them together. Okay. So how I can actually do that. But before clubbing, we uh, what uh, I try to do is it's actually important for us to, you know, uh, to have an indicator which we can use and which we can refer later on to see which that particular tweet belongs to a which tag. Okay. So for that, what I have done is I just added one more column to my data frame and I named it as a tag. Okay. And what I am doing is I'm iterating into this list. This is my list, right? Which I have created above. That's the merged list. I'm looping through each and every item of that list. Okay. And I'm also adding in my tag column, that particular index that will actually help me in identifying. Okay. So this particular tweets belong to Apple. So I will write, okay, this belongs to Apple and another records. Okay. This belongs to a coin desk. So I will put coin desk value in the tag column and that's it. And I have created a CSV and I have tried to print the head values. So as you can see now, so this is how my data frame looks like. So I have a date column. I have an ID associated with it, username, tweet, and a tag column, which I have created above. Okay. So all these values belongs to altcoin. So it's written, it's an altcoin, altcoin. So it actually helps us in identifying that particular record easily. Okay. So here I'm just checking like the unique values, which are there in my tag column. So I can see all those values are present, all those tags, which I have used above. And now I'm actually making or uh, checking the shape of my data frame. So in my data frame, I have around 54,000 rows and five columns. So everything is good until now. So now let's try to see how we can actually, what, what kind of insights we can find from it. First of all, I can see like I have a date column, right? I have a date column, but in data frame, we cannot actually directly use that date column as that is of string object. Okay. And we have to somehow convert that into a date time object. So how I can do that? I can actually make use of the pandas to actually, uh, to convert that into a date time. So as you can see here, I made use of two date time method and I parsed my date column as shown here. Okay. So once I have done that, I can extract the date like uh, DT dot year month and day using DT dot year, month and day, and I can store it into the separate, separate columns as I have done here. So now, as you can see, what I have after doing this is that we have separate columns for year, month and day, rather than having one clubbed column as we have above. Okay. So we have done that. And why we made use of in place equals to true. So if we, if we do not write in place equal to true, our original data frame will not change. We write this parameter to true, uh, to, to tell like, okay, make these changes to my original data frame. Like I want to draw this column and yes, make that changes. So next time I use that data frame, I do not have that column in my data frame. Okay. So we are done until now.
So now let's start with the analysis part. So our first thing what we are trying to see is how many users in each of those particular tags have tweeted. Okay, so if it's an Apple, so how many users have tweeted in that Apple tag? So how I can do that? That's a simple way, right? It's a simple group by command. So what I have done here is I have just grouped by the tag column which I created above and I am doing is I am just counting all the usernames associated with that particular tag. So once I have had that I am passing it to the bar edge like the horizontal bar and I am passing the index and the values of my grouped data. And why I have done x ticks rotation equals to 90 degrees I have done that for these x labels. So, so that they can be rotated by 90 degrees. It looks beautiful that night is not like uh, if the values are large, it may overlap. So it's actually better to rotate it by 90 degrees as it looks more beautiful. And visualizations, I will say guys in data science, it is very, very important. Now I'll be creating one separate video for visualizations where I'll be talking about different, different kinds of visualizations such as radar chart. You have different bar plot, pie plots. We'll be talking in detail with about that as well. Hmm. So let's see what's the next step. So the next step is I, I have now observed until now like how many users in each of the particular tag we have. So we can also see right which user has posted the maximum and minimum number of times in our data. So how I can actually do that. So for that what I did is I just check the value count of the username and I use the IDX max and the IDX min method from my data frame and what it actually does is it gives me the name of the user who has tweeted the maximum number of times and the minimum number of times. So as you can see the user who has tweeted the maximum number of times is BNB tracker and the one who has tweeted the minimum number of times is regenerate rum. Okay, so now we, we are also interested in that. Okay, we know like this user has posted the maximum number of times, but actually how many tweets he has posted in those seven days. So this will actually help us in seeing, okay, if this user is posting like 5,000, 6,000 times, it may be due to a bot. So we can see, okay, so they, this is something fishy and we need to look at it more carefully. Okay, so this kind of judgment uh, this kind of analysis can help us in finding that particular judgment. So what we have done is we have used the log for that. So temp is the we got this right the value counts. So we are using that and we are applying log on that to get the maximum user. So all those locations or the log or the rows where we have the maximum user give me that. So it actually gives me the count for that and I had just passed these to the my x and y variables which I can then pass on to my bar function to plot a simple graph. So as you can see these are the values for that. So I can see okay the BNB tracker the user BNB tracker has tweeted around 4000 times close to 5000 and the minimum is the regenerated RAM count has tweeted only one time. So actually if we think like that we can see like this seems a bit fishy because a one user is actually tweeting around 5,000 times. How is that even possible guys? Yes, you can think like that, right? So now let's go into further analysis. So now we can also analyze the tweets posted each day. So I also, I am also interested. Okay, so this user has posted around 5,000 times. What about every day? How many tweets he has posted every day? So we can make use of that day column which we created above by converting our object column. Okay, so how we can do that? Yeah, again grouping our data frame, but this time by using the username and the day, and we are taking the count of the day. So once we have that, we are just resetting the indexes here, and we are filtering our data frame. And how we can filter? This is the syntax for that we can just check in our group data frame give me all that data where username is the maximum user which we got above and this i have done is to just so that um, we can use it in the plot uh, instead of just one two three in my x-axis i can actually see the complete date so this is why i have created this simple dictionary 
so for that i have just replaced that in my day column and i have passed these as my x and y to my plot so this is a line graph which we can it can actually help us in understanding the trend and the number of tweets guys so as you can see on this day that particular user tweeted around 760 or 770 times and gradually that plot or that, that trend started increasing and then it dropped after 6 february so now let's see what else we can extract from this data we can also create a pivot table okay so for that pivot table also we have used the same thing that group by tag username and username count and for pivot what do you do is we just use the pivot method and in pivot method it takes around two or three value uh, three arguments that we have to pass that is index columns and the values and in the index we have passed the tags that which we can see here that is altcoin apple and the bitcoin and in the columns i have passed the usernames so these all are my unique usernames which are there in the data and the values in the table is actually the count associated with that so as you can see this user has not tweeted any tweet on altcoin so that's why we have a nan over here but this user has tweeted 10 tweets so that's why we have 10 over here so you can see or uh, you can play around with it like okay so we can see it like that as well so now let's see for now we have seen an overview for my whole data who is the user who is tweeting maximum times and what's the daily trend of that user so now let's see for that particular tag who is the user who has posted the maximum number of times okay so for that also we are doing the same thing which we have done above but here we are doing it for each and every tag so as you can see i'm checking the lock using the lock i'm checking the maximum user for the altcoin and similarly here for the apple so after doing that you can see here so in the altcoin what we have is the user is the BNB tracker with the tweets count of 3058 and in Apple the user who has posted maximum times is crypto tree map with the number of count as 6 we can actually visualize this in a very beautiful graph I'll tell you I'll tell again guys visualizations are very very important so we we must plot as many graphs because when we show these trends on insights to higher management they will not see all this information it's always a good habit to visualize that in a beautiful chart. So yeah, this is here. We can see this is the user for. And he has tweeted uh, for about 3000. This is a different graph. Let me just see. Yeah, so the here it's a different kind of graph guys. So here what, we, uh, what I have done is. So I know, right? So this here is the maximum user with the maximum tweets in the altcoin so i have clubbed them together okay so bnb tracker in alt crypto tree map in apple i have created a list and in y-axis what i am giving is the maximum count of the those values i'm just simply plotting it to help us visualize okay so here i can see is in alt we have the maximum values okay so now let's go down So again we have uh, what we have done is we have again filtered our data frame of the merged data frame we are checking if the username is the bnb tracker and we are grouping it by day dot count and we are again trying to see the trend so this is actually the tweets made every day by that bnb tracker so in day one he made these many tweets in day two this user made these many tweets and so on so now what i try to do is we have a column tweets column right so how we can actually work with textual data is a very very amazing thing guys so what we what there are actually different kinds of ways we can actually work with the textual data such as we can use a porter stemmer we can use a limitizing strategy or we there are some advanced concepts as well such as using a word to work or a bird transformers and uh, yeah we have transformer models like chat gpt as we see these days 
okay so for here we have not made use of a potter stemmer potter stemmer is actually a, it's guys it's actually a trade off potter stemmers are actually uh, what it does it it's a stemming process as the name suggests so if you give it a word like running or working it will just stem the word and it will give you the base verb that is run or uh, work but there are some disadvantages there are few words uh, when you give it that it does it is not able to stem it properly it gives you the wrong word so lemmatization here is actually an it's better than potter stemmer as it have a predefined dictionary and where the words are actually correct and we can make use of that dictionary okay so here are a few of the steps so i have created a simple process tweets method which takes in my tweet okay and performs these following pro uh, operations to pre process the data so first of all what we are doing is just convert whatever tweet we have converted into the lower case second step is uh, this is a simple regex guys any words which starts with an at the rate have an a to z character or 0 to 9 number or this is a or symbol guys or it has a not of these things okay and it starts with a url this is actually checking the url this is an escape symbol this is for urls and we are removing the repeated characters here this is also a regex for that and uh, in nlp it's actually a good practice we what we do is we remove all the punctuations and numbers as well before passing it to a model or just doing anything before doing anything with the textual data these are the basic steps that we do so this is actually removing the punctuations from our data we are tokenizing it and what tokenize means is like you have a complete sentence like hello my name is gurdan so when you remove the punctuations from these sentence and you tokenize tokenize is separate each and every word like hello separate name separate gurdan separate so this is what tokenize means okay so once we have tokenized as well we are also removing any emojis if we find any okay so for that this is the method for that we are removing the emojis and uh, we are using the lemmatizing on those particular words and it gives me return the return those particular tweets back after performing all those pre processing steps so how to use that method just we'll use the data frame we'll give that particular column to it and just use the apply method and apply pre processed text method which we have created here so i let this forming the head after this we can see this is how our data now looks like this is our processed tweets so this was our original tweets data as you can see it has hash by nine coin it was in upper case it converted into lower case and some pre processing it did this there was an emoji here so now we don't have an emoji here so that's a good thing so now the next thing comes up is to check the polarity of the tweet whether a particular tweet seems positive whether it seems negative or it's a neutral tweet for that we can actually make use of uh, we can say the text blob and this here is a simple method to actually check that it checks if it's actually greater than or close to one it's a positive tweet or it's close to negative one it might be a negative tweet and if the value is closer to 0 it's a neutral tweet okay so i am just whatever i i got the pre processed tweets right with the name of the column so i am yes using that pre processed tweets and i am applying the polarity function to it this here polarity function and this is going to return those values and i can actually plot it into a on a graph and i can visualize it so for plotting is i will just give neutral positive and negative okay so these just use these values in my x axis and the colors um and the cent value which i am getting from here okay and why i am just passing this and these are the colors which i have defined and i can actually see okay so in my data set i have most of the tweets as my neutral tweets okay majority of them are positive tweets but there are few tweets which are negative tweets hmm so we can say okay so we do have some tweets which are negative so guys this can be like a really big thing when we are doing twitter analysis so if we, if we can see like if there is a user who is actually posting tweets 5000 times 
and he might be posting negative tweets then actually that is a very big factor he might be posting some you know violent content or abusive content or that may be a religious content that is actually not good for the general public so we can actually identify those scenarios or those cases so now let's see who is that user let's check for each and every user which user is checking positive or negative comment or a neutral comment we can do that and how we can do that again we'll group by username and we'll have a sentiment column also right now we have one more column that is a sentiment column so i am just checking for the count of the sentiment so and we are also filtering if my user is a bnb tracker or it's a crypto trip app or all these users any of these users okay and i have created a simple pivot table again with the username and with the sentiment and with the values you can check like this as well or we can check like this as well so as we can see the bnb tracker is mostly making neutral tweets that is a good thing okay but we can see like this is that user who is the one who is making some negative tweets as well this is a popsico so we can see okay we can do further analysis into that okay but this is how a basic workflow or what kind of mindset we should have while actually extracting or and finding some insights from the data there is one more thing that we can actually do is we can actually check in my twitter column and that uh, pre processed text like which is the word which is occurring the most most common times okay maximum number of times which word is occurring so for that we can actually make use of the word cloud so it's a very good method guys just uh, pa pass these values to the word cloud the maximum words the background color and we can see that update recent price these are few of the words that are occurring maximum number of times in my tweets column so yeah that's it for this uh, analysis guys you can do many more things i'll be as i have told earlier i'll be putting this code in the github and if you want to add on to something or you want to just discuss something just put it down in the comments so thank you for watching it guys see you in the next video bye bye